my HQZs. Now remember that Ed Sheeran cameo on GOT? We were all like WTF. No better way to bring us out for fantasy land and crashing back to reality. Well, Sheeran has now expressed his thoughts on the fact that fans were less than thrilled by the appearance. He now wishes his character had been taken out. Yes, finished off as redemption. But like the rest of us, he fears that guy's still out there somewhere, chilling in Westeros. I'm Shazza Carpenter, your trivia Targaryen, and this is HQ Trivia, where if you get nothing wrong, you'll get the Iron Thong, I mean Throne, the Iron Throne. Now the rules here are simple, I'm gonna ask you a series of questions. From easy to hard, you've got 10 seconds to tap that answer, get it correct, you move on, answer all 12 right, you win or split that dosh. Now don't forget those extra lives. Did you get one in the gift drop earlier this week? I hope so. If you have a friend sign up to HQ using your code, you can score one that way as well. Now, of course, Extra Lives can help you win big and keep you in the game. Now, tonight, we are giving away a thrilling and suspenseful £1,000. That's enough for a plastic throne, because the throne's a throne after all, right? All Ed Sheeran's greatest hits and Dothraki lessons as well. But before you waste it, You've got to taste it. Let's get to the quizzing. Here we go with Q1. What's the typical name for a holiday taken by newlyweds? Honeymoon, deep fried Mars, sugary Saturn. Ooh, I have a sweet tooth. This is making me hungry. A little peckish. You can't have a wedding without rings, but Saturn isn't the celestial body we're looking for here. The stickiest of satellites is a honeymoon, and you knew that. You're over the moon by that one. 73,000 of you are. Brits have been honeymooning since the 1800s when upper class couples would tour Europe together. Q2, which of these types of bean grow on plants? Runner Bean, Sean Bean, Mr. Bean. Where have you been all my life, HQTs? been searching for you. They sure kill him off like he does, but Sean Beans don't grow on trees. Better at runny than funny. It's the runner bean. And you are sprinting on with 72,000 moving on to the next round. Native to the mountains of Central America, this scarlet runner plant can grow to over nine feet tall. That's like this high. Now it's shout out time everyone, a very, very happy birthday to Leander Tom, one of our awesome writers at HQ. Hi Leander, hi to Big Ant in Exeter, hello to Chelsea who gave birth to HQT Charlotte yesterday, congrats. Hi Lewis searching for Wi-Fi on the train, good luck to you. Hi to the Spiky Boy Detection Squad, Ellie is with us hoping to make it past Q3 today, I'm feeling good about that one. The Magpie crew is playing, that's Adam, Dwayne and Hao Yin, how you doing? Josh and Dad. TJ are here and hello Jamie W, Rachel and cousin Alex and Dean and Alex at uni in Derby. Good luck to all of you players. Here we go with Q3. What's the name of the UK's biggest arts festival which takes place annually in Edinburgh? Crofts, Glastonbury, The Fringe. You can use process of elimination here if you don't know. If you went for Glastonbury, then you've missed the mark by 381 miles here. Better at funny than runny, it's the fringe. Are you feeling the benefits? 54,000 of you certainly are. The Fringe is the world's oldest arts festival, growing from a handful of performances in 1947 to over 53,000 of them last year. It's a lot of performances. Do not forget HQTs, we've got some major money in store for you on Sunday. We have a 5,000 pound prize in the big game. I'll be hosting, so see you there and be prepared. Q4, Russian politician Vladimir Lenin was exiled to which area in the late 19th century? Clacton on Sea, Benidorm, Siberia. Vladimir vanished. There is no greater punishment than being stuck with British expats. I should know I'm one of them. But Lenin wasn't sent to Benidorm, the least brutal of the three. It was Siberia. And that was a cold, cold one for 52,000 of you. Lenin was exiled from Russia because of his political views, only to return and turn it into the Soviet Union. That's what happened. Q5, the writers behind which of these comedy programs work together as radio presenters? Father Ted, Phoenix Knights, The Office. Faces made for radio. Three shows that had us in permanent stitches, they're hilarious. But which was written by a couple of radio presenters putting slough on the map? 
The Office, one of our favorites. 23,000 of you got that right. That was a tough one right there. That was brutal, or brutal, as I like to say. Ricky Gervais and Stephen Merchant hosted a hilarious show on XFM, mostly at the expense of their producer, Carl Pilkington. Those producers, they always get it, poor things. Q6, which of these theatrical personalities released a Tetris-based single in the early 90s? Andrew Lloyd Webber, Michael Ball, Liza Minnelli. Remember that track? It was very catchy and very annoying. None of them scream avid gamer, but who button bash this one out? The Phantom of the Opera himself, Andrew Lloyd Webber. And well played by 9,720 on this savage question. 14,000 of you down here on Q6. And do not forget Savage. Saturday happening tomorrow. Now released under the pseudonym Dr. Spin, Weber's Eurodance track reached number six in the UK singles chart, did well. Q7, we're halfway. Iceland does not have which of the following, a world heritage site, a constitution, a public rail system. It does have the Aurora Borealis, which is what I wanna go and see. The whole country is worthy, but they only have two World Heritage Sites. Constitution, yes. Choo Choo Station, no. It's a public rail system. All aboard for 7,614 of you. Well done. Iceland may have no public railway, but they do have plenty of trolleys for your frozen goods. You'll be glad to hear. Q8. James Bond actor Roger Moore had a phobia of which of the following? Guns, driving, skiing. Mole Roger, mole problems. This is one problem here though. Three Things 007 does on a daily basis, but which one scared the bejeebus out of this bond? Getting triggered by the one with a trigger. Guns, he had a phobia of guns. You're pulling out the big guns, 2,614 on another savage. Another sausage happening here on Q8. Savage Saturday, tomorrow. Uncomfortable on either end of the barrel. Moore played Bond as more of a schmoozer than a shooter. Q9, which of these ancient civilizations invented the aqueduct? Minoans, Phoenicians, Romans. The all important aqueduct. Who was behind it? The Phoenicians gave us the first alphabet, but who gave us the aqueduct? Better known for their labyrinths than their liquids. The Minoans is the answer we were looking for here. Oh my goodness. This is triple savage, or is it quadruple? I've lost track now, but 3,000 of you down, just 249 if you got that correct. The Romans may get the credit, but the Minoans were at it 3,000 years before Rome even existed. That was a tough one right there. Q10, a Cannes Festival parody of which footballer getting involved in politics was a big success this year? Diego Maradona, Cristiano Ronaldo, Luis Suarez. Which player got political in this parody? Three of the biggest personalities in football, but who got spoofed on the silver screen? More of a diver than a biter, Cristiano Ronaldo. That's who, and you're stepping over that one. 283 of you are. Diamantino follows a Ronaldo-like footballer duped into an anti-EU plot by his evil twin sisters. Just shut up and take my money already. Q11, the penultimate round. The first tech billionaire to come from New York founded which company? Buzzfeed, Snapchat, Shutterstock. The billionaire mind was behind which of these? John Oranger was born in the Big Apple, but which of these giant companies did he set up? Snapchat, but for professional photographers, Shutterstock is the answer we were looking for here. 236 of you shutting that one down. Soulless smiles at the ready, because we are stuck imaging into the final round with 236 players left in the game. Another three using their extra lives to get back in. And that big 1,000 pounds up for grabs as we speak. Good luck to each and every one of you. Q12, which of these authors is credited with making the first reference to pop in relation to music? Oscar Wilde, George Bernard Shaw, George Eliot. You'll be popping bottles in no time if you get this right. 
None of them were even alive for the cheeky girls, ooh boys. But who said there's too much pop for the thorough enjoyment of the chamber music? It may sound like wild, but this wasn't one of his. The biggest non-believer of the bunch, George Elliott for the win. We've got 67 winners, my lovely jumplies. <laughs> Oh my goodness, oh my gosh. Congratulations to our 67 winners. You survived. It was either a triple or quadruple sausaging happening tonight. And you are taking home 14 pounds and 93p. We've got Omitron 50, nice tongue right there. We've got MT, nice hands. We've got Moon Man over the moon. We've got Annie K. Uh, the Masala Trivia Victors, you are victorious. Stuart 53, Will Jones UK, what are you going to do, do with the cash? Maybe take a trip to Deep Fried Mars, take the train in Iceland if you can find one, or pop those bottles to the cheeky girls. What an epic game, HQTs. I hope you enjoyed the ride. I certainly did. I'm Shazza Carpenter, and you can find me right here on the socials if you want to stop by and say hello. It would be nice. We'll be back tomorrow at 9 p.m. with Savage Saturday. All Savage, all the time. Can you handle it? And 1,000 pounds up for grabs. Until then, have an awesome Friday night, and I will see you Sunday for the big game. See you then. Bye. <laughs>